Okay, good morning. Um, so, before we uh, take up the topic, uh, transition metal catalyzed cross coupling, we will actually continue uh, from the previous class that was on organomagnesium. And uh, one of the applications was in the synthesis of heterocycles, which is again a, a special kind of it is an important topic which will be uh, talked about after a few classes. Uh, <coughs> But uh, in the last time, uh, we gave a reaction called Bartoli reaction, Bartoli reaction and it is a very useful reaction. If you recall, uh, you have to identify the starting materials, the starting material is nitrobenzene and the other por portion is uh, a vinyl magnesium, vinyl magnesium, vinyl magnesium bromide. Okay. So, this is the thing and you do not have to do anything, just mix them, but uh, the ratio of the starting metal should be 1 is to 3, that is the minimum. And the product uh, that uh, you are going to get is a straight away and uh, straight away, so of course, so this, is, this has to be hydrogen, so vinyl magnesium the state where you will get this indole. So, so it is a neat reaction. What is the mechanism? The mechanistically uh, actually there are uh, three different steps. The, the, the first steps um, is a kind of a, a unique reactions of what often we do not expect. Uh, if you uh, look at this nitrobenzene the structure, uh, we often write this. Then this magnesium adds to the oxygen, adds to the oxygen as to the oxygen and nitrogen charge is neutralized. So, result is uh, result is you get an oxygen linked vinyl group, oxygen linked vinyl group. Nitrogen is now um, neutralized, this oxygen now is linked to it magnesium bromide, magnesium bromide fine. Okay. Then what? Then actually, uh, this oxygen is picked up by the vinyl vinyl Grignard, vinyl Grignard. So vinyl portion rather. And what you will find? You will find a. Mm, nitroso compound and of course, the other portion would come out as oxygen minus is an inolate, oxygen minus and inolate it comes out. And um, the, so, essentially what you get is a nitroso benzene in the intermediate. Uh, what next? What next? Um, you can expect one more this is uh, this is minus that comes out then if you have magnesium bromide and again then the first equivalent is consumed then the second equivalent second equivalent mind it nitrosobenzene has a unique property though many of you probably know it can be uh, used as a dill solder dinophile dill solder dinophile uh, the uh, reaction takes place across the nitrogen double bond oxygen. Then if you cleave with that means you can incorporate nitrogen in an heterocyclic in an acyclic moiety. Then another reaction uh, very recently uh, is developed by two uh, scientists called Hayashi one of them the other is Macmillan. Uh, both are uh, organic chemist specialized in organocatalysis. And if you do an alloy reactions with those uh, with uh, with nitrosobenzene, you will see oxygen is getting linked to the carbon, not the nitrogen. The uh, often we are accustomed to polarize this uh, nitroso bond uh, towards this oxygen, right? And nitrogen gets the positive charge. That's the, just like a carbonyl. But in this case, the polarization is in a reverse manner, uh, probably because of, because of the aromatic ring system. So, what we will be um, getting now 
uh, is a double bond again nitrogen and um, oxygen then you have now and you have magnesium up here magnesium here and this bromide I think um, uh, what next I think all of you probably would uh, anticipate right what is the next possible reaction the way I have written I think uh, is very uh, apparent right uh, it will undergo 3 3 sigma trophic rearrangements. So, this one ok that means um, well <coughs> how do I ok 3 3 sigma trophic rearrangement. So, you get a new now carbon carbon bond formation. nitrogen magnesium and then you have this oxygen now oh, oh, oxy, oxygen as a ketone uh, ok and uh, then all of us can understand um, what will happen next because nitrogen magnesium means polarized towards nitrogen. So, it is like a shift based kind of formation and eventually what we will get you will get nitrogen up here is a 5 member ring and then we have oxygen here uh, magnesiated and this. Uh, then probably the, the next step is uh, I think this uh, proton transfer and this is where one more the last equivalent of magnesium is consumed that is the reason why three equivalent of magnesiums are required. All of us know magnesium also picks up the acidic hydrogen. So, uh, it will pick up this acidic hydrogen he sorry uh, acidic hydrogen and uh, then this should be polarized and so eventually you will be getting a <coughs> dimagnesiated product this is magnesium bromide up here and this is O magnesium uh, O magnesium and uh, so if you uh, if you next is um, if you acidify during the workup. So, all of us can uh, guess what would happen uh, it would uh, produce NH you know on, on the one hand on the other hand it will have this OH up here and uh, which I am sure it is not very stable. So, under the reaction conditions uh, it would eliminate water and it will give this uh, indoor. It is a very nice way um, and it is pretty versatile reaction. There are a lot of examples which have been executed uh, by this method. Okay. And uh, the only thing that uh, the organomagnesium uh, reagents are sometimes very reactive towards many functional groups that is the disadvantage and next most disadvantage is this uh, use of excess amount of this organomagnesium. Okay. And now, uh, quickly just uh, see whether you can um, work out a uh, reaction scheme without Bartoli reaction. Suppose you are advised to make a prenylated indole, prenylated indole. So, uh, how would you synthesize this? How would you synthesize this? What is the starting point? Obviously, you see the most of us so what we do, we will do a retrosynthesis, right? And uh, what are the, uh, the first step in starting the retrosynthesis? You have to look for some of the transforms. What are the transforms we have not talked about so far? Uh, towards the end of the course, actually, uh, we will talk about the constructions of the different heterocycles. I mean, so far we have talked about only two. One of them was oxazole by Van Leeuwen method, second one is Bartoli. Okay. Uh, so, <coughs> how uh, other than that whatever you have studied in BSc. So, um, uh, what could be the uh, proper for, for example, indole synthesis how many indole synthesis uh, do you know of? How many I said no? Uh, well, I, I know at least 10. Okay. Now, obviously, the Fischer indole is the first one, Fischer indole is the first one the modification of the fissure is jab Klinger method, the Klingman method. Okay. Third one could be Madelung synthesis, Madelung indole synthesis. Fourth one 
बाटोली में भी ओके फिफ्थ वन नैनी जेट्सको नैनी जेट्सको रिएक्शन वेरी यूजफुल रिएक्शन सिक्स आई थॉट आई आई नोट टेन दैट्स वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से सिक्स गैसमैन सिंथे गैसमैन पॉल गैसमैन गैसमैन इंडोल सिंथेसिस वी स्टडीड इन 1974 प्रोफेसर असीमा चटर्जी टॉटस एंड दैट वाज डिस्कवर्ड इन 1973 सी टॉटस इन 1974 आई स्टिल रिमेम्बर ऑडेल्स ओके सो मे बी मोर मे बी प्लेंटी एक्चुअली इफ यू जस्ट रिव्यू दिस दिस बुक बाय ली ऑन नेम रिएक्शन इन हेटोसाइक्लिक केमिस्ट्री यू फाइंड मेनी मोर मेनी मोर Uh, at the moment, I cannot offhand. I cannot remember. Oh, in term of that Fruschner indole synthesis, Fruschner, Fruschner, um, Alloy Fruschner. He is the director of Max Planck Research Institute in Germany. Uh, what he has done, he has basically uh, 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 formed the carbon-carbon double bond of the pyrrole ring by McMurray coupling. All of us know McMurray coupling. And then one modification is there where you can form the double bond by Wittig reaction, so the, so now it has already been eight. So two more we have to collect. So like likewise, we are actually developing one more, based on house annulation in our lab. We have already done it, but examples are very few. So hopefully that also would then there are other methods. So that means uh, when you are given a problem on synthesis, I mean of course this reactive synthesis should be done, but one of the major steps is identifying the right uh, transform. That means the forward reactions. Okay, for example, when I asked this question to you, uh, you suggested that fissure indole should be applicable, but believe me, it is not applicable. There is a reason. That means you have to understand the reaction mechanism. What is the key driving force? Key driving force means you have to find out the rate determining steps. It's a multiple steps, but one of the steps are, should be rate determining step, and. Um, uh, Fissure indole is very good for many many uh, uh, molecules, but it is not uh, appropriate for the very simple molecule like this. That means, for simple molecule, mean mean to say that two three dies unsubstituted. There is no sub. Huh? Right. It doesn't work. So that's the thing. That means you have to know a little bit in depth of the, all these transform. Then only you have to choose. So okay, and of course. And other points should be the starting material. So in this case, okay, I, for your convenience, I suggest let us say the starting material is this one. Okay, so, so that means our reactive synthesis uh, boils down to a benzenoid like this. Then now, what is the forward? Uh, now, the forward direction, forward reactions. So what do you do? Let us say uh, I give you the answer. The appropriate starting at appropriate uh, transform is Bartoli reaction. So, uh, what, what is the suggested step? Next step. Uh, Suzuki coupling uh, with uh, Suzuki coupling, fine. With the corresponding boronic acid, that's fine. So we have to yes, Suzuki coupling could be a possibility, mm, uh, but there are okay. So we have to again know all these details though. But um, uh, how to make the Suzuki boronic acid? For simple one, simple allyl ar 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 um, boronic acid, perfectly all right. But it's an unsymmetrical un one. So the Suzuki may also take place on the other side. In most cases though it takes place. But the, the the one that has been worked out is a uh, starting from the organolithium compound actually. So what you do, you make this um, lithium reagent and lithium reagent. So lithiation and lithiation can be done by since you have a bromine already there, so the halogen exchange. And uh, if you do with a phenyl lithium. The reaction uh, proceeds in hundred percent yield. Hundred percent yield. What next? Then you have to introduce this uh, uh, allyl uh, or prenyl group here. Prenyl group here. Mind it. In most cases, 
the penile, penile relation does not take place unless you put cuprocyanide, cuprocyanide, right. But uh, in, in, then you ha in some cases uh, actually if the reactivity is so uh, compatible then you can directly do this lithium, uh, this displacement especially if it is an allyl exchange substance not this simple alkyl substance. So, the product then would be uh, just basically a uh, penylation, penylation and uh, you have to take note of this thing that stability of this lithium nitrobenzene because uh, we have seen that many alkyl lithiums also undergo addition to the uh, um, nitro compounds, but in this particular case it is pretty stable probably by controlling the temperature you can st uh, stop further reactions of these and um, once this is done then of course uh, the next step is quite easy right. Next step is very easy what is that vinyl magnesium bromide. So, uh, 3 equivalents of vinyl magnesium bromide you can straight away go to this material ok. So, this is from the last class now, uh, uh, now today's topic is uh, cross coupling. Cross coupling is a very important topic all of us know uh, in the last year we talked about uh, I think pretty well, I mean exclusively rather I should say uh, talked about this. So, um, uh, since now we have um, other people also from other sections and I have to talk little bit about this just so what I will do I will uh, just uh, give an overview give an overview uh, of the cross coupling then uh, I will have uh, selected examples from pyrrole probably in the next class we will have examples from other class books ok. And um, there, there are <coughs> so first of all let us define what is cross coupling, how do you define that see whenever you start a topic you have to first uh, you clarify the scope and definitions, definitions and the scope I mean how much we talk about ok. So, when I say cross coupling I think oh, what does it mean? Let us say uh, someone who is uh, ok, uh, Bolo, uh, ok, what, what do you mean by cost coupling from daily IIT? Is it taught there? Is it taught there? Is it taught, there? Is it taught in your place? In uh, Was it taught? Huh? Who taught that? Professor D. Bandhubadda. D. Bandhubadda, ok. So, uh, so what is what is the meaning of cross coupling? Cross coupling means formation of carbon bond. No, I will not take it. There are so many carbon carbon bond formation in organic reactions. Huh? Palladium mainly catalyst material. Okay. Not only carbon carbon. So that that means you have to define. When I say cross coupling, what does it imply? Cross coupling of what? Not really, not really. So okay, I, I think um, I, I think that the best thing would be the organic organometallic people writes. Uh, organ, um, actually, uh, have you ever heard of this ligand coupling? Uh, if you remember this ligand coupling, that would tell you what is exactly cross coupling is. Right, and all metals. That means that that's it. The two different uh, ligands on the metal surface undergo coupling. So it could be R, uh, R. It could be, uh, of course, R A R, and it could be this uh, A R A R. It could be. It could be alkene and alkene right it could be I mean all possible combination aryl and alkene what else what are the other possible now we know and now our domain is our scope is heteroaryl heteroaryl right we have heteroaryl aryl so I mean you can go on writing so many things then uh, heteroaryl and alkenyl so, alkenyl. 
So, I mean as al instead of writing al alkene alkenyl I write alkenyl. So, you have so many possibilities, so many possibilities, but uh, when I say ligand coupling means actually uh, the reaction uh, is uh, taking place on a metal surface and the, uh, and the, um, the coupling takes place on the metal surface. Uh, and most often of course, uh, all these ligand coupling or cross couplings are referred to the transition metal catalyzed reactions, transition metal catalyzed reactions. And there are uh, again more than uh, 10 different, um, 10 different uh, cross, uh, right, 10 different cross coupling reactions. What are these? Just quickly review, uh, what are the names? There are 10 different names, right? Or what are the 10, uh, 10 different names? Okay, I am so many right, all of you know. No, but when I say so, but you are now in the uh, higher class, you have to prioritize, means which one is very good, which one is very bad, which one is, okay. Uh, I see, yes, I think in my mind, in my mind, uh, Suzuki, because this morning I was going through a review article um, on patented literature on cross couplings, what I find that most of the examples are from the Suzuki couplings, uh, okay. So, Suzuki coupling. Okay, and uh, now next most which one you think? I, I would say Negesi, Negesi, Negesi. Uh, next, mm, okay, Heck. Uh, next, okay, I will take Sonogasira. How is that? Sonogasira. Uh, Okay, still a. Uh, I would uh, take uh, still a little later, uh, maybe Kumada. Kumada? No, I, uh, at least in this class, I will take something else. Buchwald, Hartwig. Then I will take uh, Stille. Anything else can you do? Uh, okay. There are other couplings actually people call actually uh, uh, Hiyama, fine. Hiyama is yet to be developed. Okay. Uh, who? Fukuyama. Fukuyama, uh, Fukuyama. Okay, uh, I don't re remember, but I heard, I uh, roughly remember. Do you remember what is it? Toruhu Fukuyama. Yes, I know. And uh, then there is one more. Um, uh, uh, Suji uh, Trust. Uh, Suji Trust coupling. And so, I think uh, there are, I mean, of course, there are many other, but these are the main ones, main ones. Now, you have to know a little bit about this actually uh, strength and weaknesses of these. Okay. All of us know they are all, um, most of them, most not all of them, most of them are transition metal catalyzed, most of them are transition metal catalyzed. Okay. And, um, there are many more, there are actually there are quite a few because alloy fusner also is um, uh, associated with a discovery and uh, so that is very similar to uh, Kumada reaction actually. Kumada, uh, we will talk about that little bit of this, but um, for example, um, Suzuki coupling, um, what are the disadvantages let us say, what are the disadvantages of or weaknesses, um, what are the weaknesses of this uh, um, Suzuki coupling. So, the, 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 okay, let us talk about the weaknesses I think, that strength I think uh, rest of the things are the uh, strength. Uh, Suzuki coupling, uh, okay. so what do you think uh, uh, Suzuki coupling? Suzuki coupling basically the organoborants are more expensive, that is it, nothing else. Because in many cases what you have to, uh, you have to convert these organolithium, organomagnesium, all these uh, organometallics to uh, organoborants uh, or the direct uh, borylation are very expensive, there are very few reagents. So, that is basically the, uh, this is the cost, uh, cost is important, uh, weaknesses. 
uh, for legacy coupling. When a legacy coupling is there are many many strengths though. So, uh, but uh, weak, uh, weak, uh, is there any weakness of this uh, legacy coupling? Negative coupling, uh, the organo zinc compounds are water sensitive. When a Suzuki coupling can be uh, carried out in water, but um, negative coupling cannot be. Like uh, organo magnesium compounds, similarly, Kumada coupling, for example, uh, water sensitive. Water sensitive and not that general, not uh, general. So, these are this okay. Now, heck coupling, heck coupling is uh, what are the weaknesses of the heck coupling? It is very good. Huh? What is that? Uh, heck coupling is uh, heck coupling involves sp3 and sp3, right? All oh, right, sp2 and sp2, right? No, no, weak coupling. That means sp3, sp3 cannot be done, right? So, that means limited. So, the scope is limited and so scope that means limited to uh, sp2 carbons. So, that is uh, okay and one more heck coupling is good for uh, intramolecular reaction, but heck coupling also um, uh, gives rise to residue isomers. It is residue isomers. If you have a double bonded compound, you can have you know addition in alpha position or beta positions. So, uh, residue chemical problem. Chemical problem. Uh, sonogasira, sonogasira is good, is very good, but it is limited. Sonogasira, uh, uh, it is limited to only certain uh, kinds of that means, uh, that means the scope is limited, that is it. And book wall reactions, book wall reactions, of course, it, uh, it is not uh, really uh, carbon carbon, uh, uh, it is not really involving the carbon carbon ligands. And book, if you recall, book wall reaction actually requires a nitrogen. A nitrogen. That means, uh, let us say you have R something like this, R in a, R in a H2. Then that means this X would be. You know. So that means uh, it's somewhat restricted, but it is very useful in heterocyclic compound, heterocyclic chemistry, heterocyclic chemistry. And still a, still a, I mean there are so many plus points. Still is very good for the total synthesis and it is very uh, mild reaction, very mild reaction, uh, but uh, expensive at all. and then, then disposal problem. I should say disposal problem is more important. This uh, Tila is in heavy metal and uh, disposing the uh, tin in large quantity, that means it is not scalable. The scale, the scale of the reactions cannot be increased. Okay, so, you get a lot of, so this is a uh, this, this disposal problem, waste, so uh, wastage of materials. Yama, Yama is not really into the chemical industry yet, but uh, and this, okay. So and this is um, Suzuki, a uh, Suji and Trost coupling. This is uh, somewhat separate, but um, again it's limited in, in scope. That means that means scope is limited, um, limited scope. What what it means? It always requires an allylic kind of acetate, allylic acetate, allylic compound, allyl oxygenated allylic compounds. Uh, so that means you have a limited scope in the reactions. Okay, and so that means and uh, for us, I think uh, the first two three reactions are very useful. I, I should say five: Suzuki, Negishi, Sonogashira, and Kumada, and probably okay one, two, three, four, five, six. The first six would be very useful. First six would be very useful. Uh, let us look at a um, uh, uh, look at an example um, from let us say um, uh, again a from the patented literature. Uh, the target molecule is a heterocyclic one, where it is sort of looks like a biaryl. It is a pyrazine derivative. That means nitrogens are one four one four. Now you have a substituent N pentyl, N pentyl, and you have O tart butyl. So uh, grossly looking, it is a biaryl. Now wh where do you connect them? Uh, where disconnect them? Or disconnect it? 
obviously the, this is the aryl aryl sp2 or sp2 you know all these transition metal conditions are very well suited for sp2 sp2 connections right so if th this is so now you have to make a choice that's the whole trouble the choice should be i mean whether and i mean so you have since you have so many possibilities so many different kinds of the couplings which one do you choose making a decision is important or taking a decision is very important so to do so you have to actually learn all of the reactions in depth then only you can do it okay in this case so which one is this let us say you you give me suggestions i'll uh, try to defend you or other uh, myself also so that means two uh, two era uh, two units are uh, of this right this is one of these retro uh, sorry 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 now you have to put groups here so you have to fill in the blanks ha uh -huh. well uh, so we made a mistake in the first place actually the other possibility we have not looked at other possibilities could be this is also pentyl that means we can also think of because at one point that connection between the sp2 and sp3 uh, were tough now i mean there are i mean suzuki all suzuki both suzuki and negishi are now um, well developed for making a cc bond between the sp2 and sp3 so that means the uh, options are wide open now so uh, what can you do so this is also a possibility now we are in the uh, heterocyclic chemistry class right so what do you know we know in a heterocyclic molecule the two position is very reactive especially have a nitrogen in six member ring system six member ring system and that's what is done in the one of the, the choice is in the patented literature the choice is um, that um, you first make this biaryl somehow and biaryl then you can uh, you take this uh, halogen of here halogen of here understood because all of us know that uh, halogen in a um, next to nitrogen in a six member ring pretty labile because of this electron low electron density at the carbon so uh, the all sorts of nucleophilic addition addition elimination reactions to take place so if this, this is the substrate that means one side is now uh, well chosen so what should be the this, this is uh, what i call this um, uh, acceptor now you have to have a donor you have to have a donor right what is the donor and the donor could be again this donor um, if you just uh, look at uh, the periodic table we have talked about lithium then diagonally placed magnesium then then what we talked about uh, further lower down uh, go to zinc uh, is there anything the next, the before zinc you had copper right copper was in one position right one group one and so copper so that means up to um, copper uh, we don't call actually this um, uh, cross coupling reactions so the like the reactions of the copper reagents with this thing that thing because they are not transition metal catalyzed so we have now zinc then go to boron boron no a palladium is a catalyst so it's not a reacting actually donor Uh, is petal then comes uh, aluminium yes aluminium has limited use uh, i cannot i can ignore aluminium and uh, no silicon then uh, germ germanium is out then tin so these are the very few metals actually so when you talk about the donor uh, you can concentrate on all of them 
Sometimes, as I have said before, organolithiums can directly displace these uh, halogens. Okay, if uh, normally doesn't work well because you have now another nitrogen, so it can cause all kinds of the problems. Okay, magnesium also is very similar. Uh, magnesium normally is less reactive, so to make it a more reactive, now you know that there are all possible of uh, this transition metal catalyzed reactions. Although it is less reactive, now we have, we know the cross coupling reactions, the Kumada reactions. So Kumada, you can, so you can think of the Kumada reaction. First, let us think of Kumada reaction. So that means uh, pentyl, magnesium. Um, in this example, they have used magnesium bromide. Magnesium bromide. Okay. <coughs> what next? You have to choose the right catalyst. What is the catalyst? Uh, Kumada actually yes, originally used nickel catalyst, but many other people like Nakamura, Nakamura, Aloy Fusna, they have used iron. And in this example, in the patent literature, uh, interestingly, very interestingly, they use catalytic amount of ferrous bromide, uh, sorry, ferrous chloride, ferrous chloride, less expensive less expensive than commercially directly available ferrous chloride. Okay. And the yield is, uh, yield, uh, yield is not mentioned if, uh, since it is in patented literature uh, and this was developed in 1994 uh, uh, by a company called Ube Industries. Okay. So, that means it is an industrially suitable reaction, very useful magnesium and um, so uh, quickly then uh, uh, summarize you know uh, what we talked about. And then uh, you have to that means you have the halogens etcetera. Uh, again quickly, uh, so uh, our first choice now in heterocyclic chemistry is Suzuki. So you have to uh, know the um, uh, donor. Uh, um, what is the donor? Boron, right? So uh, boron and acceptor. That's what also you have to think about acceptor. What are the acceptors could be C X halogen? What else? Now what else? Triflate, very good. Actually, in organic chemistry, you know, such an important, uh, such a vast uh, subject, you, you can suggest anything. If not done, you can start doing it now. Believe me, and uh, recently I have seen you know they have put carbon sulfur, sulfonium, ammonium salt, carbamate, all kinds of living groups, which which has a little bit of living group property. So that means it's very difficult to actually um, evaluate uh, ancestry groups from higher higher classes. Uh, anybody can just argue, well, sir, I have seen this article somewhere. This has been displaced by this. Okay, so versatile, but of course now we have to, uh, as I said, we have to prioritize. We have to, you know, give more importance to one to the other, uh, in preference to the others. Okay, so this is the thing. Then catalyst. So catalyst, all of us know Suzuki means uh, often uh, is the palladium, and then uh, uh, so it goes to Suzuki. Then uh, then uh, is uh, Negesi. Uh, Negesi primarily. It is carbon zinc. So, this is and the acceptors are all same acceptors of carbon zinc. Occasionally, it is carbon aluminum. Carbon aluminum. In fact, in older industry, uh, some of the reactions were carried out with um, uh, 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 aluminum. And the, so, then palladium. I mean, then if someone says okay nickel, well then I have to say well might be. I mean, but most commonly it's palladium. Okay, uh, when I say palladium, means palladium zero and many many more catalysts. Okay, and then uh, what is your next choice? Uh, uh, Heck. Uh, Heck. Uh, what is the donor? What is the donor? Carbon. What is the donor? No, 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 donor part. 
the, 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 the donor part means the substrate that would donate these alkyl groups or aryl groups. In Heck reaction, Heck reaction, carbon hydrogen, sp2 carbon hydrogen, alkene. Uh, so, that means carbon hydrogen of uh, alkene or even arenes, arenes. Simple benzene also would do the reactions. Okay. And acceptor again, same thing. Accept anything, anything else? One more, one more. As this um, diagonium salts, this, sorry, di diagonium salts. Diagonium salts are very useful, and uh, again, it has a, uh, it is a also a name reaction, something like called Matsuda or something. Heck, Matsuda reactions. Oh, only difference that uh, in this case the acceptor is this uh, uh, we, we have done it uh, in fact our reference has appeared in uh, smith's book okay mm, so because we have used an uh, heck reaction of the diagonium salt in the synthesis of an aryl moiety so and this is very useful i mean you just um, uh, can just uh, go through this written literature you will find plenty of references plenty of references in fact uh, there is an article review article also on this and uh, and many a time, in fact, the uh, once we did actually the uh, this reaction has been partly developed by one ex faculty of Jadavpur University, Swamitra Sen Gupta. He has left the university. He is now in the industry. Uh, he did this reaction in water, and in one of the papers also he describes you don't need palladium, uh, very expensive palladium, just palladium charcoal that is used for hydrogenation. That can also be used. And we, I think, we did once that works well. Okay, so this that that that, 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 is, that is the reason why this reaction now is named after the corresponding scientist Matsuda or something like that. So, so again, it's a palladium. Then, <coughs> uh, for the boron, I think uh, the, you have to know a little bit of these uh, the Suzuki couplings here. This is, uh, boron can be used. Uh, as a boronic acid derivative and then or these are the, this is one of the commonest one and uh, other one is boron that pinacol, pinacol derivative. These days lot of people are using actually the corresponding pinacol derivative and uh, I think here Hiyama will not talk about and other thing and uh, then uh, I think uh, in heterocyclic chemistry that is most important is also uh, Buchwald, sorry Buchwald, Buchwald reactions, Buchwald reactions and uh, and sonogashida these are the two uh, okay uh, so in uh, so, uh, book what uh, what is the donor uh, bo bo donor is amine so carbon nitrogen that means it's an amine nh so i mean so nitrogen or you can write nitrogen any i mean is the donor acceptors again halogens and uh, uh, triflet most commonly most commonly. Okay. Sonogashira, what is the donor? Sonogashira, what is the donor? Is uh, the corresponding acetylene, acetylene compounds, acetylene compounds. That is it. So, these are the, I, I, I think uh, I will not overburden you other things, but uh, these, these are the things uh, uh, I think I should say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These 5 reactions are very useful in heterocyclic chemistry. Okay. And um, let us uh, look at uh, one of the uh, one or two, I think all of you know the mechanism or should I uh, talk about the mechanism I think what is the working out what is the mechanism let us say Rita uh, what is the mechanism what are the steps work let us say working mechanism working mechanism no detailed mechanisms okay. detailed mechanism will consist of uh, six different steps right six different steps oxidative addition and then uh, uh, no, 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 no. Oxidative, oxidative addition, isomerization, systems isomerization, the ligand, ligand systems isomerization, then uh, no, uh, 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 insertion, insertion, then migration, and uh, so many things. 
Okay. So, that means, you can actually a reaction mechanism can be divided into 3, 4 I mean more more than around 6 different steps. Okay. But, um, in organic that th those are the approaches taken up by the organometallic chemist. For organic chemist, I think uh, uh, 2, 3 steps are enough. One is uh, this oxidative addition, then uh, oxidative addition, uh, then I think I, I would say transmetallation maybe or you can say insertion, insertion whichever you like and then uh, reductive elimination that is enough, that is enough. Okay. So, we, I do not have to tell them. Uh, now, uh, there are uh, few uh, tricky things you have to remember. If you will let us say if you go for the Heck reactions, you will see something different I mean some uh, sometimes the outcome is not really as expected. For example, uh, I have a uh, reaction uh, which I write now, this is a triplet and then you have enamine yes. and the reaction conditions that you have to sometimes you have to be a little bit careful about this reaction conditions. In this case palladium the 0 with uh, the one I have here is R uh, by NAP. R by N F. Uh, this is only uh, three mole percent, three mole percent, and there is an amine. There is a cyclic amine. Okay. So. Uh, they are, all of us know this by nap R by nap means basically uh, to introduce this um, chirality in the final product and uh, by nap by naphthol phosphines. This amines uh, normally are given uh, this thus you have to I think understand what is the use of amine uh, or what is the use what is the use of amine and the, the, the are the things you have to just uh, take note of then uh, in a reaction of this kind you have to have the right catalyst, you have to write additives also and many times you know you will see in uh, Heck reaction uh, especially um, in uh, Professor Jekaraj lab they often use a base that is not commonly used. What is it Moon Moon? Okay. So, okay, what about any no senior research scholars? Okay. They do not use the normal base like sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate or trithalamine they use something little expensive. That means, some of the reactions are very tricky and sensitive to the reaction conditions and uh, CGM carbonate, CGM carbonate. Okay. So, likewise you see here it is a particularly base, but base is required. What is the purpose of the base? In most cases you are eliminating uh, as a net result like say HBr or HI all these things. Okay. So, to compensate that and uh, occasionally base is also like uh, trithalamines, triphenyl phosphines they are used to reduce the palladium to palladium 0. So, fine. So, now what is the predicted product the, um, of so it should be a uh, what is the uh, class of the reaction? The reaction should be categorized as follow what is the what is the reaction? Heck reaction. Heck reaction. So, heck donor is uh, heck donor is this is uh, olefin here and this the product that you will find. Uh, so, <coughs> so, product of what you will find is an ester group again and so this, this comes from the triplet and double bond is now moved, double bond is now moved to the other side. Normally, it gives a hex reaction gives alkene that means, alkenyl hydrogen is substituted alkenyl that means, uh, we would have expected a reactions on this side this con right Conju with conjugated double bond, but what you see here is a deconjugated double bond uh, primarily because of a step in Heck reactions. Although, we have worked out this simple working mechanism like these oxidation eliminations, but there is a critical step also in Heck reaction. What is that critical step which will account for this sort of isomeric compound? The, uh, this sort of isomeric compound actually intermediate <coughs> and CO2 
Oh, okay. No, okay. CO two it is right here. So the intermediate, actually, the palladium uh, is somewhere here. So you have uh, this double bonded uh, ester here, and this is ester, and this, right? And what is that next? Beta elimination. That's the thing you have to remember. So that means a beta elimination takes place. We saw beta elimination takes place here. So all of us. Know. These are the thing you have to recall. So once you have this beta elimination, so you'll have beta elimination, and so you'll get this, and this is OME. What next? The same thing will undergo isomerization. Again, palladation will take place on the other side, and eventually the, uh, the, it will go to the double bond. Simply because you have nitrogen, the nitrogen lone pair would assist the stabilization of the double bond. It is an inamine structure. Inamine structure. Sir, is there the possibility of forming double bond isomerizing both ways? Isomerizing both ways, right? This is, that is a possibility, but the product will go to the more stable ones. Right. Okay. So uh, uh, th th this is uh, somewhat common. Also, let me get, uh, get, uh, give you one more example from the five-member heterocycle. Um, you have a dihydrofuran and a triplet like this. Uh, so a triplet. Uh, do this reaction. Uh, in this case, uh, palladium D D B uh, palladium D B A. Palladium DBA, dibenzyl acetone, dibenzyl acetone, palladium DBA. Uh, this is only th three more percent. Mind it, the uh, percentage requirement uh, of the catalyst are uh, catalyst is very little. And so, then diisopropyl ethyl am amine, and the uh, temperature is only 30 degree, means uh, sort of like room temperature. And uh, again, a base is required, amine base. Uh, this is a, known as this is also sometimes people say unique base, unique base. Okay, and of course, uh, anything else is missing? Anything, anything missing? Uh, solvent uh, benzene. Solvent benzene. Uh, and, uh, and a ligand. Phosphorus ligand, and phosphorus ligand. Okay, so uh, uh, the phosphorus ligand in this case is a uh, phosph diphenyl phosphenobenzene kind of molecules, and once again, it's also in heterocycle. It's a chiral heterocycle. Uh, it comes oxazoline heterocycle. And this is for uh, introducing the chiral center. So the product here, uh, product here. Uh, would be product here would be uh, the uh, this is this uh, acceptor part and the donor part now again a furan. Now see the double bond has undergoes has undergone had undergone migration to this next thing. So like this you know that means uh, it is not uh, heck reactions uh, sometimes it is predictable sometimes it is not but uh, but it once it uh, works it gives the well defined the structure well defined the structure i think uh, maybe uh, one more uh, okay i think i will stop here we'll stop here where uh, in next class basically what we'll do we'll have uh, more examples first we'll restrict the examples to the five member ring systems and try to see what are the functional groups that could be accommodated and then uh, we'll see uh, some of the things like uh, total synthesis done and before I uh, end, uh, let me give you uh, just a uh, little homework to do at home and see if you can do it. Uh, how to how to produce Okay. 
and, and one more. Is that all right? So, we will actually discuss all these things next class, but uh, before that you just work out. In fact, uh, this is a very interesting one, very recent is again a recent example in one of the papers. This is